Why have we made fish glow? By glowing fish, I don't mean fish that would be dyed or colored. I mean fish that are born with the ability to glow. This is Danny Orario, commonly known as the zebrafish, native to southern Asia. The wild zebrafish mostly living in the Ganges River do not glow. To make the zebrafish glow, scientists took a gene producing a fluorescent protein from a jellyfish and transferred it to the embryo of the zebrafish. But why did scientists do it, and how was it done? Three significant scientific advances were needed to make fish glow. We needed a suitable fish, we needed a glowing protein, and we needed a way to get that protein into that fish. Of course, lots of other advances were required as well, but I'll concentrate on these three. Let's start with the fish. Zebrafish is an aquarium fish and is also used as a model organism in science. It's used in a wide variety of fields like drug research and the studying of the development of animals. Zebrafish is also a relatively new model organism in science. Mice have been used as a model organism for hundreds of years, and fruit flies for over a hundred years as well. Zebrafish made a splash only in the 80s. The rise of zebrafish can be attributed to George Streisinger, who started studying zebrafish in the 70s at the University of Oregon. At the time, Streisinger was already well known for his work in bacteriophage genetics, but he wanted to expand to more complex scientific questions, like the workings of the nervous system. He didn't want to settle for anything less complex than a vertebrate, as his model organism for the human nervous system. Streisinger spent nine years setting up the fish research. He didn't want to involve students in the work because it was a risky endeavor and might ruin a young researcher's career. After a painstaking start, Streisinger published his fish research in 1981 and other scientists got interested. The fish proved to be an excellent model organism. It reproduces fast, and because the transparent embryo develops outside of the body, it can easily be manipulated and monitored. The fish combined many of the best features of other model organisms. The fish grew in popularity, and methods for working with the fish became well known to scientists. By the time the fluorescent fish were developed, zebrafish were well established and understood as a model organism, allowing for new steps in research. The second part of the puzzle was the discovery of a fluorescing protein. In the 60s and 70s, Osamu Shimomura and colleagues studied the jellyfish Aquaria Victoria and extracted the green fluorescent protein, or GFP, from the jellyfish. This work would later grant Shimomura the Nobel Prize. GFP is a barrel-shaped protein that produces green light when excited with light. Other fluorescing molecules like luciferase that makes mushrooms and many other organisms glow need to bind other molecules and ions to produce light. GFP only requires oxygen. This makes the use of GFP easy. It can be produced in a variety of cell types. The initial discovery of GFP did not lead to applications in research. It was in the 90s with the first transfer of the GFP gene that GFP took off. And this brings us to our third puzzle piece, the development of gene transfer techniques. In the 70s, the labs of Stanley Cohen at the University of Stanford and Herbert Boyer at the University of California, San Francisco, released a series of publications detailing techniques to transfer genes between species. The technology made concepts that were science fiction before possible, for example, allowing the production of the human insulin protein in E. coli bacteria. Gene transfer is possible because all organisms on Earth are derived from the same early cells and all organisms share the same essential cellular functions. The human insulin gene can be transferred to a bacterial cell and the insulin protein is produced with the bacterial cell machinery. This is similar to the way it would be produced in the human insulin producing cells of the pancreas. Although the idea seems pretty intuitive now, it wasn't back then. 
Researchers suspected that there were barriers between species, with one species' DNA limited to working only in that species. Cohen's and Boyer's publications changed this view, proving that gene transfer was possible for pretty much all laboratories with modest biochemistry equipment. In the 90s, the three puzzle pieces, the zebrafish model organism, the GFP protein and gene transfer technology had advanced far enough to come together. The first glowing zebrafish were created. To make a fish glow, the GFP gene needs to be placed under a promoter. A promoter is a length of DNA that determines where and when a gene is turned on. Usually it's located before the gene in the chromosome. For example, the Milpfa promoter in zebrafish is strongly active in the skeletal muscle, where it controls the production of part of the myosin muscle protein. Because the promoter is muscle cell specific, the myosin muscle protein is not produced in the other cell types of the fish. We can engineer a synthetic piece of DNA, where the GFP gene is placed next to the Milpfa promoter and insert this synthetic DNA into the zebrafish embryo. Now the fish has many Milpfa promoters. The first one is already in the genome of the fish and it's the one enabling the production of muscle protein. The others come from the inserted synthetic DNA, enabling the production of the GFP protein. All promoters are activated in the skeletal muscle cells and GFP is produced in great quantities. The fluorescing GFP protein acts like any other protein in the cells of the fish. It's made of the same amino acids as the fish's other proteins and glowing is not painful for the fish. Also, glowing fish don't seem to be a threat to the environment, at least any more than ordinary zebrafish are. In fact, glowing fish may be at a disadvantage. They can be easier for a predator to see. The most well-known glowing fish were created by Jiyuan Gong and colleagues at the National University of Singapore. Gong studied the Milpfa promoter among other promoters and created brightly fluorescing zebrafish. After succeeding in getting the fish to glow green with the GFP, Gong transferred the YFP protein producing yellow light and the RFP protein producing red light to the fish as well. A patent for these fluorescing fish was filed and the right to sell the fish was sold to Yorktown Technologies in the US, which started selling the fish under the name Glowfish. Glowfish have been sold in the US since 2004. The sale of the fish is limited, with all the EU countries, for example, not allowing the selling of the genetically modified fish as pets. But glowing zebrafish are not limited to making aquariums more colorful. When and where GFP is produced in the fish determines its function. If the promoter chosen is one that is activated when there are heavy metals or other toxins in the water, the fish can be used as a biosensor. In this case, the fish start fluorescing if there's, for example, cadmium, a heavy metal, present in the water. Fish for monitoring the health of the environment have been developed with varying degrees of success. Jiuan Gong's glowing fish were also initially developed for biosensing toxicants. Constantly glowing fish were just the first step in the process. The applications don't stop at environmental monitoring. Transferring a fluorescing protein is a comprehensive tool with countless applications in toxicology, cancer biology, developmental biology, etc. The glowing fish in pet shops is a famous and striking use of gene transfer technology. But most applications of the three puzzle pieces coming together are never seen by consumers. Boy, was this video a pain in the ass to make. Thank you for watching it. These videos, they take a lot of work. There's the research, there's the script writing, there's the fact checking, which takes a lot of work. Then there's the drawing of the storyboard, uh, creating the rough draft of the video from the storyboard. Then there's all the animating, assembling of all the scenes, adding the sound effects and the music. So many things to do. And the reason I've kept doing these videos is because all of you, 
You guys have sent me lots of positive feedback and you generally seem to have enjoyed these videos. So I've kept making them and I've tried to push myself to become better. But to really kind of get this channel going, I need your help. I need you to share this video, send it via WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, etc. And post the video to Reddit. I'll leave a comment down below with some subreddits you can post the video to. Thank you very much and see you next time.